hard to film because he has so many needs. He needs so much. Are you mad I'm exposing you? Alright. He just keeps headbutting me while I'm trying to hold this, so we're gonna do our best. Hi, I'm poet and writer Kay Spivey. Today I really wanted to do Camille Merrick's Decade 20 Writers tag, the next 10 years in writing and publishing. It looked like a lot of fun. I think it's a really great idea. I know it's like the end of January, but I wanted to get it in before January ended at least. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this tag. There's about 15 questions and I thought they were really great questions. I'll go ahead and I will link her video down below as well. I'm pretty sure this is, this is her tag. Yeah, she is the original, so. Go check out Camille's video as well. Without any further ado, let's get into the questions. So question number one, what were your writing highlights from the past decade? The past decade was pretty much like my writing career was the past decade. My first poem I believe got published in 2008. I believe I was 18 when the very very first one got like published big time when I had first started sending work out. And then there was kind of a gap in there. And really, it was in the past decade that I started compiling a poetry collection, started really sending poetry out, started learning about the publishing industry and really trying to get published. That's specifically for poetry, but for short stories as well. I, I spent the early part of this decade in college doing a creative writing program. And then the next part just working on writing to get where I am today. So this has been like everything publishing wise for me has been in the past decade. Okay, if you're gonna keep headbutting me, you're going to have to go somewhere else for a little bit. He just keeps headbutting my hands. I'm petting him with one hand and he's headbutting the other hand. And I would lean this down and show you, but then I'd have to reset up my shot. All right, we're just gonna keep going. Number two. Where are you currently in the writing process and what projects are you starting the new decade working on? So I am querying Circuit, my big fantasy novel that I've been working on for years and years and years and years. I just recently sent out a ton of poems for to various literary magazines. So, you know, cross your fingers for me on those ones. By the way, I'm wearing compression gloves right now. I was trying to be cool, but also like my hands hurt. So I'm wearing compression gloves. So just like, leave me alone. I am currently working on two novels. One is my study abroad story that I've talked about in a couple of other videos that was strongly inspired by not really liking Again But Better. That's a whole other discussion. But and the other one is the novel that I wrote for NaNoWriMo that I definitely want to at least finish the first revision of this year, which is kind of a paranormal, LGBT romance. It's pretty cute. It was a lot of fun. It was like DN Angel meets Swan Princess is the pitch for that. Question number three. How have your writing goals changed in the last 10 years? Have they changed? I guess I've just kind of kept working toward them. I still really want to get a novel published. I have published two short stories, which I don't think was on my radar really 10 years ago. I wasn't really planning to be a short story writer because short stories just take a totally different kind of energy. I think I had thought I was going to focus more on poetry but recently compiling more and more poetry books hasn't been what I want to do exactly. I want to get more poems published in more places before I start compiling my next collection and I am keep going back and forth on that but number four what is your 10 year plan? Oh my gosh please. Stop rolling around! What's your 10 year plan? Where do you hope to be by 2030? Fingers crossed for me, in 2030 I'm going to be 40 years old and I want to have published a novel. I would like to have published a couple more short stories. I'd definitely like to have my next poetry collection. At least one more be out there, but like maybe two in 10 years. You know, I could do another two. But I want to have definitely published a novel or two or more. I could do more, but like at least one. Number five, what will history books say about writing, publishing, and books from the 2020s? I think we're going to hit a new, I hate to call it a renaissance because I feel like the renaissance kind of started already when publishing on demand happened. I think that was the first big hurdle. The indie scene using that model has already had its like big takeoff. I don't think that is going to be like the legacy of the 2020s. I think that was the legacy 
of the 2010s this past decade. I think really for what's going to be happening in writing and publishing is we're going to either end up with more regulations or we're going to end up with it being a little bit more free for all. I think I'm not really good at predicting the future and the, the, the industry I know the most about is poetry publishing, which is just, which I knew the most about, I should say, because ever since Instagram really started going, I feel like I'm becoming more and more the old folk. Like I was in it for a while and then it like, it took off without me. Let's say that. So, and I'm really, I'm focusing on the novel publishing industry and it is so big and complicated. I feel like I am not the expert for this particular. So, I don't know what's gonna be going on in the 2020. What genre will rule in 2020? So we've had a lot of like court intrigue type things going on, but I think, I feel like we are ready for solar punk. Yes. Oh, that is, that's what's going to happen. I am ready for the solar punk revolution. I think 2020, especially with like, we need it. The environmentalism needs to happen. And I think people are going to start writing more and more stories with that kind of hopeful green tilt to them. And I think solar punk, solar punk is going to have its moment. That's what I have to say about books writing and publishing in 2020. I think less and less of it's going to be on paper. I think digital is really going to take off but I think the problem with digital is that so often you can lose everything like let's say all your music is on iTunes and iTunes is like I'm gonna close we're not gonna have music anymore all of that music that you purchased is no longer available to you and I think that's the downside with digital and I think in companies are trying to keep it that way they're trying to make it so that they own everything and you never own anything and they can take it all away from you because that's a very good business model but it's also a shitty person model <laughs> but I think we're going to find a way for things to be less environmentally destructive aka paper books but also so that you can own things more. Let's strive for that, shall we? Because like these books aren't going to be taken away from me except by force, but like my digital books, they could get wiped out in an instant. I have no say. Number seven, how will publishing and the writing community change? Recently, we have changed. Recently, everything has become very like online community oriented. Like Twitter is really big for communities. And there's also, like Facebook groups and things. And I think the problem is there's kind of two different mindsets. There's kind of a more elitist mindset. And then there's kind of the, ooh, it's hard to like describe, but where they're like, you need to support everyone. You need to help everyone. But the thing about it is maybe it's just me, but I found that very stressful because I'm like, I want to support everyone. I want to be listening in on everyone. You need to also know where your limits are because yes, you need to network as a writer. You need to make friends as a writer. You need to talk to people, but not to people you wouldn't like be friends with. Like you don't need to support. If you, <laughs> if you don't enjoy watching some content, you can unsubscribe from it. That's what I'm saying. Like if you are uncomfortable about things people or someone is saying, you can block that person. A little bit of self-care online. If there is somebody that's in the writing community that like, you would never have been friends with in school. Like you would have avoided them at all costs. Why are you trying to support them online? And I kind of had to figure out where my boundaries were with that and like what communities felt productive and what communities felt a little bit toxic. And I have kind of changed the way that I am approaching online communities cause I didn't feel like I felt like I fit in with some crowds and it wasn't due to everyone. It was just due to like, some of the dynamic of the people coming into communities and like things changing. But I think you need to assess your comfort level and you know, really be honest with yourself online and be honest about how you're okay engaging online. And if all you want to do is listen and gain a lot of information for a while, go for that. But also you don't need to watch people just to support them. Like, yes, I want to support you, but you should be supporting people you actually enjoy the content from. And we'll leave it at that. Number eight, what genres and tropes are making a comeback? I heard vampires are coming back. Actually, what I enjoy in poetry that's coming back is a lot more 
longer form. We had gone into the like really insta poetry, but more and more people, even people who had started off as insta poets, I'm reading more depth in their writing, like a little bit more meat to the writing. It's a little less pithy. And I'm enjoying that more and more. I would also like to see a whole lot more fanfic tropes coming into mainstream because we all want more coffee shop AUs. Let's be honest, there aren't enough like published novels that are just fantasy coffee shop AUs. <laughs> like give me the dragons and give me the coffee shop and people will tell you it's stupid but we're all fans of Animal Crossing so we know this kind of shit works, so. Number nine, something new to try. I challenged myself to, oh man, I don't even remember what Camille said for this one. I challenged myself to read a lot more. I've been doing pretty good at reading actually. What do I challenge myself to do? I challenge myself to open up more in the community. <laughs> if people reach out to me, I'm really bad at like responding to comments right away. Some of you will notice like a week will pass and then I'll finally write a comment. I will try and be better and I'm going to try to talk more online and to be less scared of what people's responses to me are going to be. That's more author tube though, like writing wise, I'm going to not be scared to just keep sending out work, especially not letting the perfectionist in me take over and be like, no, 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 no. You need to hold on to this for another five years. Like, no, some of my back work, I've gone back and I'm like, I revised this for ages. I had so many other people read it. Why isn't this published? And then I go through, I'm like it needs minor changes. And most of them just cause I'm older now. I got a short story published last year that basically was that circumstance. So I'm gonna go back through a few more and be like, stop being my own gatekeeper. Number 10, a bad habit you'll kick. I should cut out coffee. I'm not going to, but. Writing really bad opening lines <laughs> or rethinking my opening lines. Man, I get stuck on the openings and just keep revising like the one paragraph until it's unrecognizable. And then eventually I go and look at what my original one was and was like, what's wrong with me? That was the best one of all of these. That was the way, be the way best. Favorite book of the 2010s. You know, I had a whole bunch of books I really liked. The first one that like popped into my mind is Strange the Dreamer because the writing in that was stunning. It was remarkable. I really loved it. My favorite poetry collection was definitely Sarah Kay's Never the Wreckage. Both of those really struck me and they come immediately to mind. I'm sure I read things I liked even more than that, but those two really stand out for me. Shout out to some author friends who will make it big in the next 10 years. My critique buddy, Kaylee, is definitely up on that list. She is definitely going to have her book published in the next 10 years and I think it's really cool and I think everyone's gonna like it and when it actually happens it's all you're gonna hear me talk about. If you have a book coming out next year leave a comment down below and maybe I will or not next year in the next 10 years. I hopefully I'm gonna have a book coming out in the next 10 years. I mean maybe we all will. Number 13 writing advice that will die. I think the writing advice that will die will be writing advice. I definitely write a lot better when I just stop listening to a lot of writing advice. It's just that when you write a rough draft, don't listen to any writing advice. Throw it all out the window. Get rid of it. The writing advice you need to be advised by is your critique partner's advice and your editor's advice. For one thing, when we all start listening to the exact same writing advice, we start having very similar writing. And what's cool is when something new and different comes out. And I think that's why Strange the Dreamer popped out at me when I read it. I hadn't read anything that was quite written that way. Like she is outstanding with detail, just beautiful. And I think the more often people really buy into a lot of writing advice, the more often the work becomes very formulaic and stale and I think there's a place for that but I think if you've got a different way of doing it let someone else tell you you're wrong after they've read your work and found out what is wrong in it. Don't just assume that your writing is doing something incorrectly because someone tells you that in broad strokes it doesn't work. So I think writing advice is the writing advice that will die. Number 14, in a perfect world, what would you like to see happen in the 2020s? Trump gets sent 
jail. We clean up the environment in a really big way. A lot of major wide-reaching environmental projects get underway and actually start working. You're probably asking about the writing community. In a perfect world, I'd like to see myself get published. And number 15, new decade resolutions. I actually have a bunch of them and I think I went over them a little bit. Write my study abroad book. I wanna revise the one I wrote for NaNoWriMo last year. I'm gonna be doing Pit Mad this year for Circuit. So please go follow me on Twitter. And then when Pit Mad happens in a April, April or March, I'll have announcements and I will be participating in that. So please help show your support. And if you're also participating, when it happens, I'm sure I'm gonna have a big announcement video. But like, if you need support for that, I will be happy to reblog, not reblog, retweet you. And if you'll retweet me, you know, like let's help each other out with that one. I mean, I hope my YouTube channel grows. I really gotta get my passport changed. I wanna read a book every month in the next decade. Decade would be good. But getting published, I really want Circuit to get picked up. I really want my Rimo novel to get picked up. It's so cute. I really love it. I want my study abroad story to get picked up because I feel like it's time for that to move out into the public. Yeah, anyway, this is a really fun tag. I'm gonna go ahead and tag anybody who watches this. If you are going to be around this decade on the YouTubes, you are tagged. So go ahead and uh, it's not too late. It's for an entire decade. You have a whole 10 years to do a video about this. So, yeah, thank you to Camille Merrick for creating this tag. Sorry, I kind of breezed through some of it. It was still a lot of fun to do. Good luck to you on all of your writing excursions for the next year. I need to come up with like a catchphrase or something, you know, like people have such nice things to say, like happy writing and eh, maybe I'll come up with something later. Anyway, bye for now.